Okay, so I just uh, arrived from uh, Post North. I had to pick up a package from a beer event. That's where I uh, ordered my uh, hops from. And I almost didn't get the package. They didn't want to give it to me because uh, the name on the package didn't really match the name on my uh, ID. And that's because in the Netherlands, when I was born, you got a full Christian name and you got a calling name. And nobody knows me by my full name. I mean, I also never use it, you know, it's Willy Brothers Hubertus. Everybody just calls me Wilbert. So also when I order stuff on the internet, I just type in Wilbert. Luckily, the lady was so nice uh, to give it to me anyway. I think that's the benefit of uh, living on a small countryside. But anyway, let's open it uh, and see what we have. Okay, let's see what we have. Here are the roots. Cascade, check. Bramling cross, check. Pearl, check. Willamette, check. And last but not least, Alfa Romeo Racao check with a plant passport. I guess he needed that to cross the borders. Looks really cold brewing Dutchman. So I moved them inside, which was kind of a project by itself because they were kind of heavy. But um, at least here they will be warm and wet instead of cold and frozen. Um, I thought that was a better idea. And as you can see, actually some already uh, sprouted a little bit. Do you say spread? Well, at least they came up a little bit. My Bramling Cross, nothing yet. And also my Willamette, nothing yet. <laughs> hey, what are you guys doing over here? You're not supposed to be here. Come on, skedaddle. Chup, 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 chup. You didn't eat my hops, did you? Hello there, little guy. My daughter once said we had the same hair. <laughs> okay, I managed to uh, put these uh, giant planters outside. I am not going to show you how I did it because it was not very elegant. And I hurt my back a little bit. 
But well, they're outside and they have already survived a night frost because, well, spring has started. But uh, it's still freezing one or two degrees at night. Um, I hope it will uh, warm up a little bit more. Um, a little bit about hops, if you have ever drank a very skunky, musky IPA and walked the streets of Amsterdam, you might have noticed a kind of a similar smell. And that is because hops and cannabis are really closely uh, related. They even look a little bit the same. You might almost say that they are brothers and sisters. And both plants, uh, they produce an essential oil and it's the terpenes and terpenoids inside that oil that create these uh, wonderful smells. The most important uh, terpenes are humulene and myrcene. And uh, humulene gives a kind of an earthy, spicy flavor and myrcene a more fruity flavor. So just by looking at your chemical composition without reading any description of your hop, you might get an idea of what kind of flavors to expect in your beer. I bought five different varieties just to see what does best in the Swedish climate, but also just to have a variety in flavors. Um, so let me introduce them to you. Okay, so the first one, Pearl German Dual Purpose Hop, medium high alpha acids, rich in both myrcene and humulene. And then we have a hop named after a mountain range, Cascade, also dual purpose, medium high in alpha acids, rich in myrcene, not so much in humulene. Then we have one of my favorites for a Belgian blonde is Willamette. It's an aroma hop, it's bred from the English Fugel. It's low in alpha acids and rich in both myrcene and humulene. Then we have Rakao, a New Zealand dual purpose hop. The breeder describes it as the whole orchard, so many flavors, but I have to admit my experience with New Zealand hop is that sometimes the description is a little bit better than the flavor itself, but probably very good for dry hopping, very rich in mercy. And the last one, an English hop, Bramling Cross, a cross between Golding and a wild Canadian hop. I have brewed uh, a beer with Bramling Cross that was grown in the Netherlands and it had a lot of black currant flavor. So I really hope this one is going to do well in the Swedish climate. So I hooked up a simple watering system. Yeah, I can set the frequency and the duration. And uh, I attach it to a, a drip hose. So I can show you maybe how it goes. Uh, let me just switch it on. Well, there it goes. So as you can see, it's really funny. It's a hose with just a lot of small holes in it. And it uh, drips water. And you might wonder, why didn't you plant any Amarillo or Citra, Mosaic? Simcoe, any of those really wonderful hops. And that's because those hops are patented or plant variety protected. Uh, the breeder has spent a lot of time developing those varieties. And of course they don't want anybody else to walk away with their hard work, which I can understand. It's a little bit of a shame for you know, the average home brewer who wants to grow their own hops. But luckily there are a plenty of wonderful hops to choose from. So yeah, all this water is probably going to uh, destroy my wooden deck, but uh, I'm not very attached to it. It's okay. And man, am I enjoying this weather. I think that's what I like the most about the Swedish climate. Uh, the dramatic changes of seasons. You could be scraping your car, plowing through the snow one day and then two days later, you know, you're sitting outside in your t-shirt. It's wonderful. Thank you, Sweden. I love you. But yeah, the winters are really long and dark. You know, at the end of every winter, I'm asking myself, what the heck am I doing here, you know? And then spring comes and it's like, oh yeah, that's why, that's why. <laughs> But now I really have to start plowing. Yep. See you next time.